Absurd! Carnage Capital retreating! If I attacked him just now, he would have killed me! He's got clout. Who the hell is this guy? Akira. People look for the shortcut. The hack. And if you came here looking for that, you won't find it. The shortcut is a lie. The hack doesn't get you there. If you want to take the easy road, it won't take you to where you want to be. Stronger, smarter, faster, healthier, better.
rights, right, within the value structure that you've created to the degree that you've done that, what would you be like? What would you be like? What would you be like? People who come into the world from time to time, and there are people who do find out over decades long periods what they could be like if they were who they were. If they spoke their being forward. And they get stronger and stronger and stronger. And we don't know the limits to that. We do not know the limits to that. And so you could say, well, in part, perhaps the reason that you're suffering unbearably can be left at your feet. Because you're not everything you could be, and you know it. You know it. You know it. Because you're not everything you could be, and you know it. You know it. You know it. What would you be like? 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 And of course, that's a terrible thing to admit, and it's a terrible thing to consider, but there's real promise in it, right? Because it means that. Perhaps there's another way that you could look at the world and another way that you could act in the world. So what it would reflect back to you would be much better than what it reflects back to you now. Imagine that many people did that. We've done a lot as human beings. We've done a lot of remarkable things. And I told you already today, for example, about 250,000 people would be lifted out of abject poverty. We're lifting people out of poverty collectively at a faster rate that's ever occurred in the history of humankind by a huge margin. So there's inequality developing in many places, and you hear lots of political agitation about that. But overall, the tide is lifting everyone up, and that's a great thing. We have no idea how fast we can multiply that if people got their act together and really aimed at it. If people got their act together and really aimed at it. What would you be like? What would you be like?
so many people because no one liked me. So I developed so many different identities. Let me sag my pants. You know, let me, okay, let me pull my pants up. Let me, let me talk this way or act this way or be this way or, or whatever the hell it may be. God, dog, there's so many different things I did to try to fit in with so many different groups that when you look in the mirror, that's the one person you can't lie to. So every morning I would shave my head thinking, God, I would reflect back on some of the lies I may have told somebody or some of the ways I acted that I didn't feel comfortable doing. And I did it to impress other normal people. The key where there's normal, everyday people. I was trying to make other people like me. How pathetic is that? So this mirror would always tell me, my, my reflection would say, God, you are a pathetic man. How does it feel every day to be this way? So I would just start having myself accountable. How did I attack today? How did I attack yesterday? And if I didn't do something I was proud of, I'd write down a sticky note and I would fix it. And I would fix it. So then my senior year in high school, it was a totally different day with God. There was a lunch table. I wanted to sit the cool guy lunch table, man. I wanted to, you know, even though everybody was calling me a nigga all the time, I wanted to try to act like somebody I wasn't so I could fit in. I sold my soul to the devil. No, I'm, I'm David fucking God. That's who I am. And so I wrote down on a piece of paper, fuck the table, sit by your fucking self. And that's what I did, and guess what happened? My table became a table people started sitting at. Because a whole bunch of people in that lunchroom felt exactly like I did. Fuck the table. Sit by your fucking self. 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 So you want to know as well? Okay, fuck. The one thing that discipline definitely does help you with, it helps you get things done. And when you get things done, when you actually do things, you have more success. A big part of success is just not being fucking lazy and just doing it. 90% of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like, you're not gonna feel perfect every day. If I only worked out when I felt good, I'd be a fat fuck. Because there's a lot of days I don't want to do it. I mean, this is pretty much the same with everybody that actually gets good at something. There's got to be those days you push through. They're probably going to be more numerous than the days you don't. And so the benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline, I get things done. I'm like the most lazy, disciplined person I know. Because I don't want to do it. Let's go. He's got clout. Through discipline, I get things done. The pro goes to work. Through discipline, I get things done. This is what I do. I also think that discipline is a pathway to creativity. When you're on the battlefield, is an absolute exercise in creativity. How are we going to attack them? How are we going to disorganize them? How are we going to get in their heads? That's all just massive creativity. And when I look at people that are artists, I would imagine the more disciplined you are, you got to write stuff down. You got to read. You got to increase your vocabulary so that you are quicker and sharper so that when people are saying things, you have more words to battle back at them. All those things, all that freedom that you get on stage comes from the discipline. You study, you learn, you read, you write, you talk, you go through things. Is that an accurate statement? Absolutely accurate. Through discipline, I get things done. The pro goes to work. Through discipline, I get things done. This is what I do. Through discipline, I get things done. The pro goes to work. Through discipline, I get things done. 
this is what I do. And it doesn't matter if you're sick, doesn't matter if you have kids, you're a pro and you go to work. And you have pride in that. And then when you are in front of that keyboard, you look down the count, it says, I, I fucked a thousand words today. And how did that work? Gems blossom. But you might have a day where you just write nothing but dog shit. So what? Show up again tomorrow. And tomorrow out of that dog shit, a flower will emerge. Through discipline, I get things done. The pro goes to work. Through discipline, I get things done. This is what I do. Through discipline, I get things done. The pro goes to work. Through discipline, I get things done. This is what I do. Wait, you mean he's going to tell us right now the secret to his amazing power? I want to know. them know his secret. First, what's important is to make sure you really stick to this intense training regimen. Wait a minute. Not modification surgery or genetic enhancement. Just training? Your biggest enemy. The most important conversation you will ever have in your fucking life is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, you go to bed with it, eventually you're gonna act on it. Whether you're good or bad, 
about you. It's about you. It is about you. You finding who you are. It's about you. It's about you. It is about you. You finding who you are. So many people die. Live a hundred years. Never fucking know who they are. in that mirror and know this there's so much more in here man because i can literally right now be a 300 pound guy spraying for cockroaches still to this day if i did not look in that mirror and say there, there has to be more to this this can't be it and then we're going to go into it dive deep into it and give all i have to find it that's what all that's about. That's about. That's about. It's about you. It's about you. It is about you. You finding who you are. It's about you. It's about you. It is about you. You finding who you are. What dream? Listen, Genos. You have to keep doing it. No matter how difficult it gets. What could you do to improve yourself? Well, the first question might be, why should you even bother improving yourself? And I think the answer to that is something like, so you don't suffer any more stupidly than you have to. And maybe so others don't have to. Something like that. You know, like there's a real injunction at the bottom of it. It's not some casual self-help doctrine. It's that if you don't organize yourself properly, you'll pay for it. And in a big way, if you don't organize yourself properly, you'll pay for it. And so will the people around. If you don't organize yourself properly, you'll pay for it. And in a big way, if you don't organize yourself properly, you'll pay for it. And so will the people around. And you could say, well, I don't care about that, but that's actually not true. You actually do care about that. Because if you're in pain, you will care about it. And so you do care about it. Even if it's just that negative way, you know? It's very rare that you can find someone who's in excruciating pain who would ever say, well, it would be no better if I was out of this. Pain is one of those things that brings the idea that it would be better if it didn't exist along with it. It's incontrovertible. You get your act together so that there isn't any more stupid pain around you than necessary. That if you don't organize yourself properly, you'll pay for it. And in a big way, that if you don't organize properly you'll pay for it and so will the people around if you don't organize yourself properly you'll pay for it and in a big way that if you don't organize yourself properly you'll pay for it and so will the people around it took me a full three years to get this strong 100 push-ups 100 sit-ups and 100 squats and a 10 kilometer run do it every single day! And of course, make sure you eat three meals daily. It's banana in the morning is fine. Well, how would you go about getting your act together? Well, and the answer to that is, it's something like, look around for something that bothers you and see if you can fix it. You have to be the hero of your own story. And you can do that. Fix it. You have to be the hero of your own story. Of your own story. And you can do that. 90% of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like, you're not going to feel perfect every day. Got to be those days you push through. This is what I want you to do. Write down what you would like to fix about your life. If you're 30 pounds overweight, you want to lose 30 pounds? Do it the right way. Write down what you eat. Exercise every day. 
force yourself to do it. The brain is the general, the troops are the body, and you get up and you do it. And then you get to write it down. You know, you're doing what you gotta do to get by, but ultimately you're not respecting yourself. I think we all have a certain amount of appreciation and respect for hero figures. We all look at the guy who never lies, always does the right thing, and fucking helps everybody out, and that's the John Wayne character, you know, that's, that's the ultimate hero. The ultimate hero. You have to be the hero of your own story. your own life and you don't stack up you're a thief you stole money from your wife's purse and you don't want to smoke cigarettes but you fucking have to you can't deal with the stress you smoke you devalue yourself you slowly start devaluing yourself you look at yourself and you realize that if you were judging yourself you would judge yourself on faith you can't pretend you're the hero of your story hero of your story most people get stuck in these patterns, find themselves on the person who doesn't follow through on their ideas. When I start things and I quit. No, you don't. No, you have started things and you quit. And it gives you a horrible sense of regret that's made you define yourself by that. You're not who you were a year ago. You're not who you were five years ago. You're not who you were last week. So you've got to regulate how much you dwell on regrets of the past. You really got to be careful. You have to be the hero of your own story. And you can do that. You have to be the hero of your own story. You can be the hero of your own story that woke up today. You can be the hero of your own story that at 40 years of age stopped, got out of bed, and said, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not doing this anymore. And I'm gonna get myself in shape and I'm gonna eat healthy. And I'm gonna do this. Cause this is this is me now. This this is me now. I decide that this is me. And people have to realize that you are not your past. You are not all the times you fucked up, but not all the times you were drunk. That's not you. That's that's not you. You are the person who's learned from a great deal of experience. This, this is a battle that you will fight for the rest of your life. But the key is to fight it, not to give in. Don't give in to that resistance. Fight that resistance. And in doing so, every day you do so, you have won the battle for that day. And you will continue to fight that battle. You have to be the hero of your own story. Never ever use the air conditioner in the summer or heat in the winter so you can strengthen the mind. In the beginning, your wish is dead. You might start thinking, what's the harm of taking a day off? But for me, in order to be a strong hero, even if I was spitting blood, I never stopped. I toughed it out and endured the pain. I did squats, even when my legs felt like they couldn't move. In other words, you gotta train like hell to the point where your hair falls out. That's the only way to become truly strong. The system will set out honeypots for people to get trapped in. The ideas of retirement, the ideas of the golden years, providing you benefits, providing you a healthy work environment. Why? Well, because they want people to work for them. They don't want people to realize their own dreams and escape. They want to set it up so that you stick around. Stick around some sort of an unsatisfying world. It's up to you to see that video game problem, to see that issue as it comes up on the map, and calculate your future. I realized this way back. First off, everybody says, oh, ideas are a dime a dozen. Execution is everything. 
and they just assume that at some point they'll be walking around and like lightning will strike them and they'll think, oh my gosh, people should share cars and I'll make an app in the middle to connect people with cars and I'll call it Uber. No, ideas don't really work like that, nor does execution work the way most people think. People think, I'm going to take this great idea and now I'm going to do it. The doing it can happen in a thousand different ways. You don't realize there's a whole spectrum of execution ranging from really, really bad so that an idea will fail, or really, really good so that even a bad idea might have a chance for success. For success. Having ideas is like a muscle. Having ideas is like a muscle. Idea muscle. Is like a muscle. Right here, muscle. I'll try to practice having 10 ideas a day. Right here, muscle. Doesn't have to be a good idea or a bad idea. Right here, muscle. But it keeps that idea muscle in practice. If you're sick and you lie in bed for two weeks, you might actually need physical therapy to walk again. Your leg muscles atrophy that fast. It's the same thing with ideas. If you don't have ideas every day, your idea muscle is not going to get bigger. It might atrophy. And so I try to practice. I'll come up with a topic and I'll try to practice having 10 ideas a day around. Each day will be a different topic, but I'll try to have 10 good ideas around that topic. Now, they won't be good ideas because you can't have 3,650 good ideas a year. But I try to make sure they're as good as they possibly could be. I've been doing this ever since I wanted to network. I'm not a very good networker. I wanted to ask my heroes, can I buy you a cup of coffee and pick your brain? And so I wrote to 20 people. They didn't even say no. None of them responded. Why would they respond? Warren Buffett's not going to say, hold everything. Clear my schedule, Gladys. He's never going to even respond to me. He's going to think I'm an, an idiot. So then I started writing down, I started researching everyone's business, and I started writing down 10 ideas for Warren Buffett's business, 10 ideas for this person's business, 10 ideas for this person's business. And then I would send those ideas to the people, and I would say, hey, you don't have to respond to this. I don't want anything, but I really admire you and your business. Here's 10 things where I think your business can improve. And then I started getting responses and it actually changed my life, some of those responses. And so I started doing it every single day without fail since then. Idea muscle. Having ideas is like a muscle. Idea muscle. I'll try to practice having 10 ideas a day. Idea muscle. Doesn't have to be a good idea or a bad idea. Idea muscle. But it keeps that idea muscle in practice. If you believe in Santa Claus and you celebrate Christmas, 
You're looking forward to Santa Claus coming down the chimney, give me some presents. It's a real good time of year, so in that good time of year, we start to feel real good about ourselves. So I start to feel great. So we start making promises to ourselves about, hey, I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to do better in school. I'm going to be better here, be better there. But guess what happens? The real Merry fucking Christmas happens when all of that noise is gone. It's quiet. And it's you against you. Against you, against you, against you. The real Merry fucking Christmas. 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 The And now all those endorphins are gone. And I promise you, man, by getting up early and getting after it to go lose weight, study harder, guess what? It's a lot fucking harder now. Guess what? It's a lot fucking harder now. That repetition becomes a lot harder now. So a lot of us can't do things on our own. So find somebody in your life. So when you throw that towel in, they throw that motherfucker back at you and say you're not fucking done yet. The real Merry fucking Christmas. The real Merry fucking Christmas. The real Merry fucking Christmas. Dead wood. 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 Dead w
as you elevate your aim, you create a judge at the same time. The new ideal, which is an ideal you, that becomes a judge because it's above you. The judge tells you what's useless about yourself and then you can dispense with it. And you want to keep doing that and then every time you make a judge that's more elevated then there's more useless you that has to be dispensed with. And then if you create an ultimate judge, which is what the archetypal imagination of humankind has done, say, with the figure of Christ, you have a judge that says, get rid of everything about yourself. It isn't perfect. Then what? of you that are no longer worthy of the pursuits that you're that you're valuing and then i would say the idea here is that as you do that you shape yourself ever more precisely into something that can withstand the tragedy of life and that can act as a as a beacon to the world that's the right way of thinking about it maybe first to your friends and then to your family it's like it's a hell of a fine ambition and there's no reason that it can't You know, every one of you knows people who are really bloody useful in a crisis and people that you admire, right? You can think of all those people as the partial incarnations of the archetypal messiah. That's exactly right. And what?
another time to give in, give in, give in, give in to desire, desire, desire and short-term gratification. Discipline will not allow that. That, that, that. Discipline calls for strength and fortitude and will. will. It won't accept weakness. It won't tolerate a breakdown in will. Discipline can seem like your worst enemy. Worst enemy. Worst enemy. But in reality, it is your best